All right, time for another physics.com. Debate physics.com also, but no point because there's nobody to really debate. <laughs> it's, uh, nobody can just respond to arguments and, um, you know, argument to counter argument thing. You know, it's all broken into pieces and not very useful. So, anyway, the thems um, keep asserting, okay, that this kinetic energy thing is real okay and so here was another experiment and it clearly doesn't demonstrate it <laughs> and it's clearly um, not very good evidence for their side um, and uh, yet they'll argue that somehow it's you know, proof or <laughs> something close to it uh, so at least he doesn't title it more proof or something he just calls it more collisions um, and he doesn't do any um, further analysis in any way, um, you know. And uh, there are obvious defects, and so we'll do some of that anyway. Um, oh, I have the sound off. A good reason. But the ratio is not perfect. All right, so this is the second video he's done. The second time he said, so why don't you just tell us what the ratio is? Why? You know, it's supposed to be three to one, but he says it's not perfect. So why don't you tell us how imperfect it is? You're talking about, you know, three to one, two point eight, or what's what's the the ratio? Which it really doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, now you know, I, I said it. You know, I'll draw it again. You know, but I mean, there's ways of doing this that are that will add a huge amount of precision, okay, to the experiment, and they just won't do it. They keep insisting on doing this releasing thing with their hands, which just creates a bunch of variation in the experiment, which is just really not a great idea. And we just don't care. So they really don't want to get to the truth, you could almost argue, um, because they, I think, by this time know that, yes, you really do have to be very precise in your measurements, and you have to be very precise in how you you do these experiments and they just really don't want to and I understand that I don't want to either um, but you know their physics is the one that should have done all these experiments already and they should have done them professionally um, it's a really significant thing you know to say you can make free momentum in a direction it's a significant physical event and if they're going to say it's true they ought to be able to prove it's true is that it's not asking science too much to prove a claim. That's just basic. If you're going to make the claim, show us the evidence. And the evidence shouldn't be, well, this is my lazy effort at it. Okay, that shouldn't be the evidence. So as with past experience, you could argue that he's gone to this trouble, but he won't do it better. So this will be the last we'll see of the pendulum. And he'll move on to something else. <laughs> so, um, you know... I, I just call bullshit. Um, you know, he, the, the auto, you know, he's got the pieces, he's got the parts, he ought to just keep making it better. I think he could use thinner strings, it wouldn't hurt, but it's fairly efficient. So let's just uh, understand from the beginning, it's fairly efficient. So it's not like you could use the excuse that there was a ton of losses somewhere. All right, so... All right, so let's do the the bounce back in improved <laughs> slow motion. Um, and, you know, you'll see that it's clearly not what it's supposed to be. Now, he, he doesn't drop it from the right height. It's just a fact. So that's as far as it goes. So it's way short of twi uh, one half the velocity. So it's two velocity from where he dropped it. It's... He's got a line that says one velocity. Now, how accurate his line is, it's all dependent on how where he has that center line. And, you know, that's debatable whether he's got that quite right. He doesn't draw the circle on the other side, so it's hard to tell whether he's got actually this, the, the dead center of the circle. Um, we don't even know how he did the circle. We don't know how the strings are attached. No information. So he just makes these two-minute videos. <clears throat> I mean, it's fine. Make a two-minute video to make your point. And then you should provide another video where you go into the tedious details, you know, where you show us measuring and doing, you know, how'd you do this thing and how'd you do that. Um, you know, how long are the strings? <laughs> so, you know, all these little things. How high are these off this line? 
you know, these are all important details and they just couldn't give a damn. All right, so we'll just play this through. So you can see well short, well short, and especially short of height wise. You can understand that it's way short height wise. It's not like three quarters height wise. It's, it's less than half of the height it was supposed to reach. So it's gone less than half the height it's supposed to reach. So it clearly can't be the <clears throat> necessary velocity. And they obviously don't hit at that center. They hit either forward or back, which is not ideal. So this is the going all the way back and you'll see it goes all the way back to a little bit short there. Usually he drops it, so he dropped it from the right height this time. This next time he'll drop it from higher, and you'll see there'll be a different result. All right, see how high this one goes back. All right, so clearly not half the velocity there. And this one he's going to catch, so that won't help us any. So let's go round two. Now he says somewhere in this video, which I'm not going to play, Oh yeah, I'm sure there's his losses, and uh, you know, but I'm sure if we do it right, it'll come out my way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way short. He's sure it's going to come out his way. All right. So he also doesn't, you know, he really should make sure that one's not moving. The the you know the three mass really can't be moving when you're doing the experiment. It's really just not good. But anyway, we'll see how far back he goes That's this time. Sad. All right, so that looks good. That looks right. That looks not too, you know, in the next one, he'll probably go higher. Perfect one to three. All right, so uh, we got the hit. So he kind of says again, it's not perfect one to three, but he doesn't tell us how far off perfect it is. Now that's weird, right? So we heard the sound already, but they haven't hit yet. Okay, so this is kind of funny. Uh, all right, so there it goes. And that's it. All right, so clearly you could say it's okay. It might have gone half the height that it's supposed to go, maybe. So way short, way short. So they are below the line, you know, when they hit. All right, let's see how far back up it goes. So yeah, it's about the same, a little bit short. So you'd expect to lose a little bit on each hit. All right, so we'll play one more. Yeah, and there's the simple things. Like I said, you you could just do this once and you, you have it, and then you can, you know, use it to your advantage if you do this simple thing of making the right tools to do the experiment. And you just, you know, why you persist in not doing that. I mean, this, the, you know, the whole idea of a consistent release is not um, an idiotic idea. It's really a scientific idea that you ensure that your experiments are consistent with each other, then you can make these comparisons and you can glean information. But you can't do that if you have all these variables. Gary, cool. So whatever, yeah, complain about Gary who just says, well, look, if you're going to do the experiment, you do it right, right? And what's wrong with that simple principle? If you're going to do something, do it right. That offends you? So here he went clearly higher, okay. So this time this one's clearly higher than the point he's supposed to be launching at. But it's funny how it backs up. Just, I don't know, I don't know what that is exactly. <laughs> Why the frame, I guess it's, it's something to do with going a frame at a time, I don't know. All right, but obviously well short, well short, well short. I mean, nowhere near um, twice, n nowhere near half the velocity, something much less. And then it really takes off there, and well, it's about the same. So, um, yeah, they were more consistent than I thought they were. Uh, but later on, like I said, as you can see, clearly he throws a little bit more energy in. And um, clearly the hit point, the point of release, is not exactly at the center each time. Um, 
which obviously makes another huge difference in terms of it doesn't take many millimeters of moving one of those lines to radically change how much energy you need to get there. All right, so I'll do the drawing for the fifth time. All right. For the fifth time. I mean, it really is not that, you know, oh, look, it's a little bit of work, okay? But, I mean, what you get as a, as a, a tool is so worth the little tiny bit of work. So it's worth the investment. You've got all the parts, you've got the pieces, you, you know, you might as well do it right. All right. <clears throat> just, so I'm afraid it's just logical. Uh, all right. So I pointed out that what you're, you know, you got this simple thing here, a pendulum, and it's going to do this swing on this arc. And the simple thing to do is to have a release mechanism that has got the measurement built in. So what you want to do is account for the center here of the mass and make sure you have a dead perfect foundation. So if, <coughs> if this is the level and the ground is here, all right, you just make sure you have a good level. All right, you just take each one of these blocks, okay, you put them up against the pendulum, right? And you just mark on each block this line. Okay, you know, the center of the mass. All right, so both blocks have a center of mass line on them. And then, okay, you just do the simple thing of saying, okay, this is one distance. And I just make sure this is four distances. Four of that distance added on. And I just cut whatever is extra off of this one. And so then I have two perfect markers. And then all I have to do is put the pendulum on top of the block. All right. And then I move it this way. And it'll roll off at exactly the same point each time. So each time I can get exactly the same velocity in. Because it'll fall off that edge at the same place. As long as I don't tilt it or do something stupid. It's a pretty reliable system. And frankly, where this one rolls off, you could just leave the block in that location and the pendulum should always miss it. And so then you can see quite clearly <coughs> where the one velocity block is uh, for four times the height difference from the center of the mass. And uh, that should be a pretty reliable uh, way of producing consistent energy in and a consistent way to measure the outgoing uh, impact. Now, the other thing that's sort of important <laughs> is this distance <coughs> here, you know, being the center. Um, but frankly, once you've got it set up, it will be automatic. You know, these blocks will be the right proportions. So as long as this one goes right past the edge of this one, you'll know that those blocks are in the right position and such. I mean, once you pull this one back to release it, the two blocks will be in the right positions. Well, anyway, so it's a way of making sure it's the same each time, and that's what they really should be trying to do. But they're not trying. All right, so you could also make the 1 16th block, right? So the argument is, is that the uh, the real velocity is the real velocity is the 1 16th block, which would be somewhere in here. Okay, 1 16th of this. So there's 16 of that velocity. And so if it goes back to that block, you know that that's 1 16th or 1 quarter of the velocity. So you have a 1 quarter block, a 1 half block, and a 1 full velocity block. And to make it kind of obvious then, uh, kind of hard to miss, um, how much energy you have in the experiment. All right, so we'll just do comments. Um, there's no comments on this video that are worth a damn. Um, let's see, how much exactly to the balls weigh? So I know you said they are near three to one, but I wonder how close we're talking about. Yes, yeah, so just these little details just seem like, well, why wouldn't you put the length of the pendulum in? Why wouldn't you, you know, these are not 
it's not that much work to provide these few details and they don't let's see what the more button says yeah nothing so um i won't i'll just ignore the walker crap and then brozo says some joke about some tad okay i love the tad as a unit of measuring <laughs> Sorry, mate. I've lost the plot. Um, not been following the argument. Uh, the argument's been the same argument for two years. I mean, it's just not that complicated. The argument's about the creation of free momentum. So, did we see it happen here? I mean, did we see it go back with a half the velocity? Well, no, we didn't. So, this certainly didn't confirm it. It was way short, in fact. So the best I can do is crack a joke. Uh, so the algorithm thinks I'm taking part in a scientific debate, whatever that even means. Has, <clears throat> um, has he been nominated for a Nobel Prize yet? So you, I'm, you know, you're going to eat all these words when the, the fact is, is that I am right. It is a push universe. It is the speed of force, okay? Matter contains force when it's moving. All these things will be proven to be true. So you're going to be eating an awful lot of crow in your years as a dead person. <laughs> yeah, your reputation's going to be shit. Uh, anyway, uh, you'll be the one winning the, the Darwin Award. The dumbass Darwin Award. You know, what, what kind of, uh, you know, we could call it the, the Inquisition Award. We could call it the dumb fucking clock stopping retard award, but that's what you're going to get, jackass. The jackass award, okay? Uh, there's going to be a picture of an asshole in your face right there in the middle of it. Uh, try persuading him to make his own bungee rope. What the fuck does this have to do with anything? Oh, yeah, nothing. Okay, so completely off the subject comments absolutely useless mush blah 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 what else is new so they're not just saying hey you know what that's weird that it didn't come out right <laughs> yeah totally failed didn't it now look it doesn't look like one quarter i'm just saying it looks a little bit faster than one quarter um but how it looks based on these drawings like i said we don't have any information exactly and obviously from the camera's point of view these look below the line not on the line so there's lots of little you know bugs in this example little bugs i mean basically it's not that complicated an experiment um but um you know we're not getting to see it like i said it'd be good to be able to see how centered you know this line does appear to me to be skewed in this direction and if you drew the rest of the circle this would be a little bit too far forward but just my opinion um anyway oh we're not on the image does that matter yeah i don't think you missed anything important <laughs> yeah, i don't think you missed anything at all uh the comment reading is you know just not that useful all right so i'll take a pause and go to my comments and talk about different stuff i guess some of the same some different people are just profoundly uninteresting it's just a fact all right comments uh, yeah whatever all right so it says uh, do you take drugs i mean you know it's just so this is the best they can come up with as counter arguments. Do you take drugs? I mean, it's a real subject, a real subject for 300 years. There's no hard evidence. There's lots of people sitting here arguing about it because there is no existing evidence. That's the whole reason why there's anybody involved in this. And this is why the discussion has taken two years is because there is absolutely no hard evidence. And that's the best you can do. I mean, yeah. Just such a waste. And it, like I said, people will defend humanity as having some function besides just proving it can only fart. You know, the brain fart, real fart, all the same thing. I mean, just too ridiculous that somebody just wastes time with this nonsense. All right, and this other uh, asshole. <laughs> yeah. That's, I just you can't press anything on YouTube. It's just amazing. Oh, fuck. Just, you know, 
the icon that the, the thing you're clicking on shouldn't be six feet away from the thing you know you should be able to find white space on the page somewhere you know where it isn't actually a link all right so this asshole says you're conflating momentum mass times velocity with kinetic energy so obviously it's right in the title I'm pointing out how the two are in conflict with each other that they can't coexist <laughs> the fact is they can't every time you transfer energy from uh, uh, to uneven masses you will either have to destroy momentum or you'll have to destroy kinetic energy you have no mathematical alternative you fucking cunt I mean asshole I mean idiot I mean fucked hard I mean you know, it's just so stupid two years and he's telling me I'm conflating something no I'm pointing out okay that it's a 300 year old controversy that was never resolved with evidence with credible evidence All right it appears you're also conflating so this word conflating is just so oh fuck you in the ass till dead I mean who says who who uses conflating instead of just saying confusing or you know mixing up or some other kind of you know regular common verbiage anyway it appears you're conflating force mass times acceleration says you okay force is a completely itself a thing okay it has nothing to do with just accelerating it has to do with something moving something moving has force it doesn't need to be accelerating it just needs to be moving with a velocity with energy force times displacement so again there's no conflation I'm saying force times displacement is baby talk it's nonsense it doesn't happen in the real world displacement is irrelevant time causes the effect that's the argument and of course you're not you're not near the argument okay <laughs> Um, these lead you to confusing the conservation laws of momentum and kinetic energy. So what is there to confuse? Uh, Professor Lewin said it pretty directly. Um, you know, nature, nature can deal with kinetic energy one way or the other, but nature can't finagle uh, momentum. He said it, but obviously he didn't believe it. All right, so you're just so full of you're so full of shit. Uh, consider your coke and dime example in the description so if you're going to bother reading the description you can see there's a bunch of arguments there but yet yeah, this one's a really good one and you can't defeat it there's no way to defeat it okay so it clearly just demonstrates that kinetic energy is nothing because it can't move a thing in space it can't move matter if it can't move matter it's not real energy you correctly identify that there is conserved value due to the lack of external forces. It doesn't have anything to do with external forces. It has to do with the fact that right off the bat you're violating Newton's third law. Your kinetic energy is saying that somehow the dime took 2,000 joules to produce and the, the uh, you know, two liters uh, took uh, two joules to produce its motion. So there was no equal and opposite reaction that causes the event. I mean, you just you people are just you can't be that stupid. You can't figure that out. I mean, come on. Uh, you correctly identify the persons moving at the same speed in both cases. What persons? There's no persons. Oh, you're just you're just saying what the fuck are you talking about? Persons. All right. However, you <coughs> incorrectly assume that the conserved value must be kinetic energy. Where did I assume that? I'm explicitly saying that the kinetic energy obviously can't. You can't show that it took twice. I mean, two thousand, a uh, thousand times more energy to produce the dime. You can't prove that it took a thousand times more energy, and you can't collect a thousand times more energy from the dime. That's what I asserted plainly. And since the conserved value is actually momentum, I, I, again, <laughs> what's the point? If if whatever one is conserved is the real one, that's the that's the way it's going to work in reality. Okay, so the one that isn't conserved is likely the fake thing, and the thing that is always conserved, as Professor Lewin says, is likely the real thing. 
All right, you conclude that kinetic energy must be momentum. No, I didn't conclude that at all. I said right out and overtly that kinetic energy is a fable. It's a lie. It's nonsense. There is no squared velocity. Just like there is none in electricity, there is no square voltage. Uh, there is no squared velocity in physical uh, uh, motion kinetics. All right. Let's see. In fact, the kinetic energy is not conserved in the example. So where, do you, where did you say it's not conserved? I mean, clearly the dime is going, okay, 2,000 joules worth of energy. It had to get it from somewhere, right? You can't just make that part up, can you? Can you just pretend that a, a four-joule explosion can create a 2,000-joule um, dime? No, it can't. All right, this is because the significant amount of chemical energy converted into kinetic energy by the person's arms. So we're not talking about throwing the dime, we're talking about ejecting it. So it doesn't matter about people's arms. It's just such a pile of shit. You obviously can't throw a dime, uh, you know, 2,000 miles an hour. Exactly how much, <clears throat> um, thousand, exactly how much chemical energy is converted to kinetic energy uh, changes based on two scenarios. So this is all just made up, completely made up. There's absolutely no evidence of any of this bullshit that if I'm a pili player, you know, and I'm using one of those paddles, you know, that has leverage involved, that I use any more energy, you know, when the ball's here or here or here or here. Um, you know, obviously I have to throw a mass at a velocity. I have to give it that force to go that velocity. Um, I, you know, obviously the one pound on the lever four times the dif distance is going to weigh the same as the four pounds at one distance. Just a fact. All right, let's see. I think you will find that throwing, uh, throwing a liter of coke at one mile an hour is easier than throwing a dime at a thousand miles an hour. Well, it's not for a lever, so that's the whole point, right? The lever sort of proves that the ideal lever wouldn't have a problem at all. So says you, absolutely zero evidence. So you say uh, you'll find these things, but in 300 years you haven't proven any of these things. So you've had 300 years to show an experiment where four pounds dropped one foot is the same as one pound dropped four feet, and you haven't done it. Uh, this is largely but not quite <laughs> exclusively because the amount of energy is so different between the two. Throwing a dime also has to be done quickly, which requires more power, which is also hard. Says you. So again, you're just making this crap up. You're saying it takes more power to throw a light thing. No, it doesn't take any more power. The difference perfectly accounts for the difference in energy between the dime and the bottle. So I uh, just made up absolute gibberish. I mean, how could you say something so bizarrely undemonstrated by any experiment ever in the history of mankind? So just an absolute pile of shit. All right, if you learn about the relationship between momentum and kinetic energy, I recommend trying a Khan Academy course on physics. So, so again, just a nonsense. He had to redo his, his double slit video like six times because the fact is that he got caught on the fact that the math wasn't working. <laughs> I mean, it's like six times he had to redo it. Okay, or maybe go to a local school enrolling in an introductory course. Why don't you go fucking shove your head up your ass, catch your own fucking diseases a second time, and then die as horribly as possible because you are a piece of scum. I mean, you can't do better than this. Rough. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. What is this comment still doing here for? All right, well, anyway, my mouse is appearing to fail. So I have to take a pause and recharge my mouse. All right, back. Uh, anyway, okay, so let's see if this... What the hell is this thing doing on my screen? Uh, anyway, finally went away. Um, all right, well, this drug comment, what is it still doing here? We'll delete under it. Yeah, we'll move, move it. Yeah, go ahead. Too stupid. Um, anyway, all right, so now we're on to black holes. And uh, the asshole 
here is the same asshole here. So the asshole made some fucking stupid comment. Anyway, so this is the other guy. Regarding black holes, I already mentioned. You mentioned that the <clears throat> maximum matter can be compressed is the neutron star. What I mentioned was there's no such thing as taking electrons and protons and putting them in the same place. You, they can't occupy the same place in space. What I'm saying is, is that idea, the singularity thing, is retarded on its face. Nonsense. Why would anybody believe that without seeing it? I mean, it's just so fucking stupid. All right. And that's a premise of physics, that this is, happens all the time, you know, where matter occupies the same place. When obviously it never fucking happens. All right. Anyway. Um, which is a state where protons and electrons are compacted into a densely packed crystal-like state. I, I simply stated that the fact is, is they, they can become very close together. That is, all the report, repulsive forces can be negated if you simply do the checkerboard thing. So, again, I shouldn't have to, okay? I really shouldn't have to reassert some kind of point that I think is just so simple that, you know, a 10-year-old could grasp the, the concept that if you create an arrangement of the objects, they can't really see each other, okay, in a significant way. So if all the protons are in this kind of arrangement, all right, and then I just have the electrons doing exactly the opposite, you know, filling in these holes. You could understand, I would hope you could understand, that the only way the electrons can see each other in this perpendicular kind of, I mean, this cross kind of uh, uh, circumstance, right, that they can't see each other, all right, this way anymore at all. And they can't see each other this way at all. And so there's the, the amount of repulsive force between them has been greatly reduced and the amount of tractive force has been greatly enhanced because, yeah, the, the two biggest dimensions, okay, are solidly um, all attraction. And the only, the only place where you have repulsion is on the diagonals. And the closer you smash them together, you can almost see that there'd be even less and less of that capacity for them to repel each other. Because only a tiny sliver of them would actually be <coughs> see each other. So that's what I argued. That obviously you could really get a bunch of electrons and protons into a very small amount of space uh, by uh, ordering them correctly in that simple pattern. All right, crystal-like state. What exactly keeps electrons and protons apart in that state? Why would they be apart? So they don't have to be apart. That's the whole argument. Well, there's no law. Well, what's the law? What's the physical fact that tells you that an electron can't be pushed right up against uh, a proton? There's no physical law against it. There's nothing about charge that says it can't happen. I mean, it basically says it must happen in a way. The whole function of charge is basically saying it must happen. There's nothing to stop it from happening. I have never heard you explain the <coughs> substructure. So, I mean, that's just... I, I'm sorry that you haven't seen it in all these millions of videos where I've explained what charge is. Uh, but shit. <laughs> sorry. That just does I can't buy that. So just watch the uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 video on the website. It explains charge and explains, and then you can just, you can just understand how, oh yeah, I guess you know, I can make a neutron pretty easy, an electron and proton stuck together. Or what it means when you say the surfaces touch, well, so you know I've said it, so why can't, why can't, what, you can't understand that? You can't, you, you know what, you can't understand this? You can't, oh look, they're stuck next to each other. You can't understand two magnets stuck to each other, that they don't become a singularity. One magnet doesn't go inside the other magnet. They blend into one thing. No, they sit there, you know, one magnet's here, one magnet's here, and they're stuck to each other. What's so complicated, for fuck's sake? We're just assuming that, let's say the magnets were monopoles, okay, at north 
an all north magnet and an all south magnet, right? And you just sit there and put them in space and they're just going to stick to each other, right? Duh. That's not that's not even close to complicated. I don't mean to be insulting, but come on. Is it because space is quantized or something like that? No, space is just locations in space. So, of course, it's qu anything can be quantized. What, do you think there's an infinite amount of distance between two things? Well, no, I'm saying there's not an infinite amount of distance, okay? I'm saying there's electrons and protons and force, and nothing gets smaller than those things, okay? They're indivisible. Those are it. That's the universe. So if you want to say a Planck length would be the width of an electron, you can make up any number for the small distance. Um, but obviously the real distance would be this, the, the you know, amount of distance you could argue. <sighs> like I said, you can establish the Planck length at anything. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how far a piece of force travels in one second or whatever. Uh, that, well, that'd actually be too much distance. But, um, uh, well, no, something, you know, just I'm trying to think of how far, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you, any distance will do. So you just establish some kind of tiny distance and you just say, look, that's the one we'll use and we'll call it quantum. Because it really isn't going to make any difference because there's only going to be a certain number of those units between two things. Uh, anyway, just, I don't know. So anyway, the asshole said... Uh, nothing. So is it because space is quantized or something like that? And he says nothing to that. So that didn't answer the question. Uh, let's see. Um, what exactly keeps electrons and protons in por apart in that state? Now that would be the question he's answering. Um, yeah, then my answer would be nothing also. That's why it's a neutron star. Yeah, it's because it's creating neutrons. <laughs> Uh, the protons undergo electron capture, so it's just too silly. You could say the electrons undergo uh, proton capture. The point is, is you've created a dipole. That's a neutron. A neutron isn't uncharged. It's got both charges. So, yes, if you spun one, you could see it would just, like I say, it was blue and red. You spun it, it would look purple. It'll look neutral, but it's not neutral. Fuck. Anyway, electron capture and becomes neutrons. Then neutrons uh, stay apart due to the, so this is the funny part, uh, the degeneracy pressure of the Pauli exclusion principle. So again, this Pauli exclusion principle is this idiotic notion that somehow things can be in the same place, but they can't be in the same place if they have the same quantum numbers. So if they have the same number, they're twins, they can't be in the same place. <laughs> Some kind of silly rule like that. I mean, it's just so bad. It's such it's such nonsense. You're just like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I didn't know. I don't know how Einstein didn't just blow his brains out. I mean, you have to argue with people who make up this kind of crap. Uh, yeah, fuck. All right. So, well, this guy's just such an asshole. I'm going to delete his comment just because he's an asshole. Yeah. Well, I'll leave it because the other guy did respond to it. All right. Um, I think you misunderstand my question. If I wanted to know standard answers in standard physics, it's not really a standard answer in standard. It's just standard for the function of attraction and repulsion. So if you understand the existence of attraction and repulsion, you have to understand if two things are attracted to each other, they don't become unattracted. You know, unless it's a complex structure like an atom, you know, where the electrons are here and here and the protons here in the middle. And obviously there'd be a nuance where it has a great deal of attraction at a distance, but as soon as it gets too close to these electrons, it starts getting repulsive and so it can't get any closer. But if you just have one electron and one proton in space, there's nothing that's going to stop them from crashing into each other. All right. Um, uh, I would, I would watch Sabine Hossefeller on PBS Space Time or some other wave particle talking heads who have already an overdose of draft science suggests a new fascinating type of physics. And my question is about his new physics. So I think it's old physics, frankly, before the woo. So it's just before the woo physics. So where you still had to have a mechanical answer, you couldn't make up 
fake bullshit. Um, bent geodesics wouldn't be allowed as an answer, you know, 300 years ago. Uh, a lot of this bullshit wouldn't be allowed as an answer because it's too fucking silly. I was asking whether his 2 plus 2 plus 3 theory or maybe... <clears throat> I don't need 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. I don't need that. It might be 2 plus 2 plus 3, technically, because there's three interactions. It can stick, it can reflect, or it changes its identity. So, and technically, those are three different interactions. But fuck you. Anyway, anyway, where space is quantized or red-blue quantized with blue and red and electrons occupying only blue and red space cubicles. I never even said anything like that, so... There's no such thing as blue and red cubicles. I don't know. What the fuck? How could you pervert what I said into anything called a cubicle? Sp space cubicles. What, what the fuck are you talking about? There's fucking matter bits. Okay? And they have to be pushed by collecting force bits. I mean, how? And all of them have to be in space. And they can't be in the same space. And the only ones actually moving are the force bits. And the only way matter moves is it has to be, it has to collect force. So how could you fuck this up? I can't, I, mean, I can't even understand. How can, I turn, how, can, how can I do this? Where space is quantized. So who cares whether it's quantized or not? I mean, it's, it's clearly, you have something like an electron. It's a real thing. It has a real mass, and you have force, and it has real momentum. And you're just saying, okay, you're just going to transfer momentum from force into momentum of matter. And in that exchange, the force is obviously not going to be going the same speed because it's pushing a big, heavy piece of matter. I, I, fuck, I just... Uh, all right. Theory where space is quantized or red and blue quantized. So it, th this is just such crap. It, red and blue doesn't matter. It could be square and triangle. It could be up down. It could be, uh, I don't know, like, you know, s s squishy hard. It doesn't matter. The two, the t the fact is, is the electron and the proton are inversely propertied. Okay, they have properties that make them act exactly the opposite in the same conditions. Shit, quantized with blue and red and electrons occupying only blue and red space cubicles. I I just don't even know what the how the fuck, how the fuck did you glean that out of my? I've watched my damn video. I don't know how did you turn my video into that cubicles. Fuck and only jump. Nothing jumps. From one red to the next free red. What the fuck are you talking about? And one blue to the next free blue. What? Hence red protons and blue electrons always stay apart from each other. From another and each other. So I don't even know what the fuck. How did you do that? Damn it. I don't know how to. I don't. St I don't know how I'm supposed to explain it. <laughs> you know, I mean, how, what, what about this? Did you understand? A little electron, little proton, little objects. Okay, they're in a field of force that's constantly hitting them. The force, okay, has two components: the blue part and the red part. And so the blue part pushes blue things. The red part pushes red things. What's so fucking complicated? All right, now I just. Damn it. I mean, this is so futile, uh, you know. I mean, when people, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, do, do I have to? Uh, I've said it before. I mean, goo uh, goo gaga. I mean, well, how how imbecilic does the language have to become, you know, to convey understanding? I just don't get it. I mean, what's the, what do we have the vocabulary of a four year old? I mean, how low do I have to go? So, I don't know if I, did I read this piece of shit. Ah, let's see. Hi, I stumbled on your video by accident. Eh, whatever. I had to look at your website because I couldn't make out what you're rambling on about uh, without any context. So, it clearly, right in the title of the video, MV versus one half MV squared. I mean, 
what I'm rambling on about is just made so obvious. The experiments are pointed out right in the video. I'm illustrating the experiment we're talking about. I mean, amazing bullshit. I think your presentation is harming your efforts to spread your ideas. Yeah, so drawing a picture, okay, yeah, it's, it's too confusing for you people. Oh, fuck. By the way, I think you're very wrong. Well, gee, by the way, I don't think I give a fuck what you think. So I think I already read this. I mean, you don't even have consistent math derivations that allow any prediction. So, of course, it's all kinds of predictions. So, again, just a more lying about, oh, there's no math. Yeah, there's plenty of it, okay? It just doesn't have a squared in it, you fucking moron. A squared velocity. Whereas modern tech would work, <laughs> wouldn't work without the current standard model being correct. Well, that's just such a lie. I mean, such a fucking goddamn lie. You can't point to a single piece of technology that requires any of this poly exclusion principle or any of that horseshit to be true. Not a single fucking thing ever invented. Uh, let's see. Down many orders of magnitude behind the. Uh, comma, whatever that means. So again, th this is the you know, it, this is the big lie that we we <laughs> we're going to measure the mass of an electron, and what are we going to do? We're go we're going to measure its mass by assuming m v squared. That's the formula they're going to use. So they calculate it with m v squared, and then when they get the answers, they use m v squared to calculate the same answer. So of course, the match. It doesn't mean anything. You start with if you did it with MV to start with and MV to 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 finish with, you would have got exactly the same accurate prediction. The prediction wouldn't have changed any. It just would have been a different order of magnitude. So instead of our our electrons and protons not being our actual mass, right? Only one percent of our actual mass is the weight of our electrons and protons. You would have actually gotten the weight of the electron and proton correct. And it would be matching our mass. That's the funny part. So if they used momentum and did the calculation, the weight of the electron goes way the fuck up. Um, but again, the number will still be just as consistent. It's just going to be a different number. So, so you're just such a liar. Oh, from cell phones to plane to rockets to computers, to GPS, to lasers, to civil construction. None of these things would be uh, would work if we were wrong about physics. It's just such a fucking lie, okay? There's absolutely, I mean, NASA says it overtly. We didn't even, we don't bother with any of this horse shit to land on the goddamn moon. If they use something other than momentum to calculate the thrust of the lunar module, they wouldn't have landed on the fucking moon. They would have crashed on the moon, you asshole. So you show me, show me, you show or shut up, you fucking piece of shit. What a piece of garbage. I mean, it's just so obnoxious. You have zero fucking evidence, especially on the subject of the goddamn video. You can show me nothing. You can show me nothing. You can never show me 16 times the fuel to spin a motor four times as fast. You can't show me any of it, you fucking liar. And you type this crap. Get what you deserve, you fucking fibbers. Ugh, disgusting. All right. So enough of this crap. There is an old Piro comment somewhere. Yeah, in some video. I have to go find that. Damn. Yeah, I don't know where it was. I can't remember. You know, he, he showed up two weeks later and posted a comment, but it didn't show up in this thing. So, but it, if it's such a weak comment, it's probably not worth the trouble. Anyway, so enough of a video. Just fuck you people. God damn. It's amazing how dishonest. I mean, you people just, you can't admit that, wow, you know, science really should do these foundational experiments. They really should prove. You know, if you're going to say it, you should prove it. You know, if you're going to say... Four pounds dropped one foot is the same fucking impact force as one pound dropped four feet. Well, then you ought to be willing to prove it. 